It's a new season for the eclectic late-night talk show duo, Desus and Miro. Maurice Dubois knows their work well. Never in the history of television has a late-night talk show sounded... I think my neighbor is dealing drugs on the corner. Wow! Or looked like this. You know it's a bad neighborhood because the drug dealers are white. <laughs> this is Daniel Baker, known as Desus Nice. And that's Joel Martinez, a.k.a. The Kid Mero. These guys from the Bronx, New York, team up twice a week on Showtime, a Viacom CBS company. And between sips of adult beverages while on the air, as The New Yorker put it, Desus and Mero have conquered comedy. Oh, damn. His wife is like, what do you got me out here doing? He's like, I was on the rowing team at Harvard. <laughs> right before the pandemic, we met at a bar and grill near the old neighborhood. Uh, I'm going to follow your lead. Are you guys going to drink too? I mean. Yeah, sure. Why not? We're celebrating. We made it to CBS. <laughs> Hooray. Doing big things for the Bronx. Yeah. So when you hear the phrase late night talk show, you're expecting guy in suit, monologue, very formulaic. So with us, it was just like, okay, like we're gonna do what we wanna do and like forget like the, the blueprint that's already there. Like we'll just make our own. I am uh, a single issue voter when it comes to Gatorade. I am straight up glacier blue Gatorade. Do you agree or disagree? You're on your own, Jack. Oh, hey. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. You know, you know, I you know, love you. Think. Wow. But I'm not giving up my orange Gatorade. Just signed to their third season, Desus and Mero offer their different take on pop culture, music, sports, politics, or whatever comes to their collective minds. It's an informed hangout session with your friends where you discuss the day's events. You know what I mean? In a nutshell. Like the barbershop? To put it concisely, the barbershop with slightly more facts. Where does one purchase a gavel at? Or do you guys get one for free? Oh, they, they give it to us. Oh, you have unlimited gavels? Yeah. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Desus and Mero have broken the late night talk show mold. Is this like a cake for people you don't like? <laughs> Do you guys want to try it? By serving up comedy their own way. No, no. This isn't Maury. You don't control the show by clapping. <laughs> and big chunks of that comedy cannot be shown on Sunday morning. At times and without apologies, they use the N word. Charlie Brown and Franklin, they look exactly alike. Mm-hmm. That has got the same father. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. If we weren't on TV, this, sorry, the N-word is the way we talk in the barbershop. The N-word is when I see my boy on the block, we use the N-word. It makes you uncomfortable. That's our everyday life. We grew up in a world where that word was common, and that's how we talk. So there are those who will look at it and see you demeaning yourself or demeaning the whole race. And what do you say to them? No, I don't see that at all, because the problem is we've reclaimed the word. And by me using this word, I'm taking away the power the word has. Does Viacom CBS ever get into you about what you're talking about on the air? Do they have limits? Do they ever, you know, you ever hear, hey, the bosses didn't like that, you guys pushed a little too far. You know what, they actually, they're pretty hands off. Could you guys have ever imagined to be where you are today? Like, literally. No. Billy Joel comes home to a shock on Long Island. Maurice! Hey! Full disclosure, every now and then, they'll use clips from my newscast on WCBS in New York. We have people in other countries who know who Maurice Dubois is. Like, we'll but mostly, their guests are A-list. Under six administrations, who has been the coolest president that you have worked with? <laughs> well, there's not a chance in the world I'm going to answer that one. <laughs> they met when they were young and in summer school in the Bronx. Mero, whose family is from the Dominican Republic, now lives in New Jersey with his wife and four kids. Desus, whose parents are from Jamaica, still lives in the Bronx. My man right here. And until COVID-19, still visited his favorite bodega. On the couch over here, we got Vashti. In the late 2000s, they started gathering fans who followed their early Twitter conversations, then their Bodega Boys podcast and their Viceland TV series. Now they're in a league of their own. How much do you know about us? I know quite a lot about the two of you. The okay. proof of that success when David Letterman appeared on the show last season. I feel like I'm with uh, my friends. 
that's like Michael Jordan telling you you're good at basketball. Him turning to us and saying, this is what late night should be, was just like... Yeah, every now and then... Stamp of approval. (laughs) Could I see the dessert menu? (laughs) The icing on this cake may be the release of their new book, titled God Level Knowledge Darts. Basically, Deces and Mero's take on dating, drugs, kids, cops, and food. The proper way to eat steak is fast. I recommend black and blue, a couple of seconds on each side. No, say you want to hear that cow still moving when you put it on the plate. Anything else, that's disrespectful to the calf. You know what I mean? For their fans around the world, Desus Nice and the Kid Marrow are making rare comedy that's well done. It feels like the world is coming apart to a lot of people. What do you feel your role is when it comes to mm. that? Relief. A little bit of relief. When we talk to people, they're just like, your show is getting us through this pandemic. We watch you guys, and it's just, it takes my mind off everything for just a half an hour, and that's, that's what's getting me through this. It's like a good role to have. 